Hello, and welcome to the <laughs> Friends in Fiction official book club. Happy hour. It's February, and we are ready to talk books and recommendations. So I'm here with my lovely co-host, Brenda, and we have this special guest that's no longer a guest. I can't remember his name, Brenda. Huh. What's that guy's um, let's name? see. It rhymes with rock. Rock something. As in rock, rock star, star librarian. Yes. Ron Rock, our favorite librarian Yay. podcast co-host. Do we like I'm afraid. <laughs> Help <Yes>. me. Welcome. <laughs> welcome. Welcome to Happy Hour. So it's always so wonderful to see you. This I just, you know, you know how much I love you and love doing this with you. So. Oh, we're well, we're so excited you to have you on again tonight and to help us. Actually, I say help us, but you really carry the book recommendations. We're just kind of extra, but we are very happy to be with you for happy hour tonight. Yes. And we are going to share some drink recipes and some fun and some book recommendations and more because we do have a few surprises. Uh oh. Oh, you know how I love those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We especially like surprising Ron. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so Ron. It's never a, a think, check for a million dollars that you surprise me with, is it? No, it never is. <sighs> um, so Ron, you have yes. um a drink to share with us today, don't you? I do. And um, I, I know this is going to seem a little complicated, but it's not. And one of the things that I love this time of year is that we're gearing up for Fat Tuesday and Mardi Gras. But I did a little research yes. and look at what's the official drink of Mardi Gras and what's the what's the most popular thing in New Orleans. It is the Sazerac. And it's, well, it'll knock your socks, maybe. <laughs> So let's see how the night goes, right? <laughs> so we're going to start with my fancy little drink beaker. I put a teaspoon of sugar in it and a couple of drops of water just to soften up the sugar. They were actually sugar cubes. And this Yum. is Ashad's bitters. They're specialized bitters. And I'll put the uh -oh. rest of this so too. You put in a bunch of um, drops of that into the beaker. Then you stir it up so that the sugar gets all dissolved like this. It's so professional when I use this beaker. I Look know. One of those fancy little cocktail bars. You're like, you, you, you are professional. I know, uh, right? Then we got the right person. Comes the heart of the drink, which is rye whiskey. <laughs> Ooh. That in. And then you fill up the glass with ice cubes. Every time I lean in, like I'm going to be able to see better if I. <laughs> I know. Well, that's what's so hard about doing it on screen like this. I'm I'm trying I to do it. And so I, I didn't I want to pour the whiskey into the, the, the saving time. So then I fill up the beaker with ice cubes. You can hear, but Carlos can't see. Give that a really, really good stir. If you can smell this, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So it's a good old stir. I wish I had flu powder, like, you know, in Harry Potter, when you throw the flu powder in the fireplace. Oh, yeah. Yes. And yes, you yes, could yes. Just, I wish I had some so I could come taste that. So um, here comes the. I, I don't know if it's the soul of the drink or the, I don't know. Anyway, absinthe, which is um, used to be illegal, but now it's legal again. And a lot of people in their Sazeracs, they add like a, a, you know, half of an ounce of it or something. But what I decided is better for me is to just put in a, a, just a couple of drops in the bottom before I do anything else. Put the top on before I spill this around. Oh, and you got to see the box. Look at the box it comes in. Oh, wow. It comes with a little spoon if you wanted to burn the sugar cube and have it melt through the spoon, too. You can do that. Oh, anyway. my gosh. Fancy. So, That's so awesome. the absinthe, you just kind of swirl it around and get it all over there. So it's getting, oops, it's all over my book. 
and then and then you just take your little little handy dandy swirly thing and strain the drink right into an already the absinthe with a big ice cube in it. Way we go. Yum. Garnish with a little lemon peel. Mm. Oh my God, it smells like licorice in here. Get that all twisty and boom. Wait, what is it? What? Lemon what peel. What's the twisty? A lemon, a lemon peel. peel. And there's your Sazerac. Yum. That is a cocktail. Oh my God. Yes, that is a grown-up drink. You know what? Because what? that is a grown-up drink, we really should have a good buzzword. So no, we no, no, get, no, 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 no. We can get Mr. Ron Block a little lit. I mean, you know my name. I'm not playing the secret word game by myself. <laughs> <laughs> you won't be playing it by yourself. We're with you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, mm, yummy, yummy. <laughs> Tonight's the perfect night to to pick a really, a really good word that we use a lot. Well, I'll go next for my yes. drinks, and then our audience might see why I'm giggling so hard. Um, tonight, I am drinking one of Brenda's fabulous mocktails. I'm drinking a Fomosa. Um, I'm a little under the weather, so I'm I'm going on the safe side. So I'm drinking a Fomosa and it's delicious with orange juice. And I put a little um, orange sparkling water in there with it. Oh, yum. Glad you could get my recipe from the last time. I love my yeah, Fomosa. Totally. Well, I've got a mocktail tonight, too, and it is a, oh. well, it's, I made this name up. It's a grapple ginger fizz, uh, grape oh, juice, wow. apple juice, and ginger ale in equal parts. Wow. And that's it. That's okay. I like it. Love it. <laughs> Lisa, oh, that's let me mention real great. quickly. Too. We've got a, a first time viewer tonight. Uh, Gail Young is joining in and everyone's welcoming her to the group. So, Hello. yay for first timers. Oh. Don't I'll run. Don't run for your life. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we get started, we wanted to um, mention that today, one year ago today, uh, Mary Kay Andrews, beautiful daughter Katie, passed away due to COVID-related organ failure. And Katie was such a light in this world, and we continue to mourn her. Um, she had so many wonderful causes that were near and dear to her heart. And um, Free 99 Fridge is a charity here in Atlanta that I, I try to frequent monthly in her honor. And also there's a charity called Helping Mamas. So we'd like to invite you to make a donation in Katie's honor. And if you'd like any more information about donating and how to donate, you can visit Mary Kay Andrews' Facebook or Instagram page. And Mary Kay Andrews, we're not sure if you're watching tonight, but we are sending you all the love and support. We love you. We love so you. our first toast of the night to Katie. Team Katie. Team Katie. Team Katie, baby. So those who aren't able to um, give a donation, if you just do something nice for someone else, it, it will exemplify Katie's spirit and what she did every day of her life. She was so kind and nice. So do something nice for someone else and, and, um, and do it in her honor. Say it forward. Absolutely. And Mary Kay, we're, we're thinking about you and love you and just wrap our arms around you. Okay. Okay. Moving. Well, since we've established, I'm yeah, sorry. Go no, go ahead, Brenda. I was going to say, since we, Ron has established he's not doing the code word for tonight, I we will just should. move. Let's see. Um, 
But you could give everybody at home a code word so when we say it, they can drink. Yes. If they want. Well, and think... of course, and of course, we didn't mention that, folks out. Please share what you're uh, what you're enjoying as a beverage tonight. Be it a mocktail, cocktail, or sparkling water, or regular water. Just share in the chat. I think our code word for the night should be pretty. Oh, I like it. Um, our drinks Vaughn are trying pretty. to think. We're pretty. What does that mean? Y'all yeah. are pretty. All of your book suggestions have the word pretty in the title, don't they? I mean... <laughs> Speaking of book suggestions, let's jump right in. Oh, Ryan, yeah. how about you start us off with your first two picks? Oh, so this is going to be really a very different thing for me because I'm mixing up um, genres just a little bit. So I want to start with this. This came to my mind again this week. Um, I don't know if people know this, but I get the incredible honor of doing panels with um, some of the publishers. And one of the panels that I moderated recently was a young adult panel. One of the books on there just came out this week. And it it just brought it out. When I saw that it came out, I was like, oh, book, this book is something everybody should read. It is a young adult book, but it is for all ages. And it's... It, it's um, uh, Black History Month, beautifully, it's a good thing for that, and it's all called Come oh. Home Safe. Isn't that a great cover? Nice. Yeah, that is a great, a great cover. cover. This I is a I day feel like I have those earrings on. You probably do. Yeah, that looks like it, doesn't it? So this is it um, does. a book, it's a debut book, and it's from Brian Buckmeyer, who you might know is an ABC News analyst. He's also a public defender at the New York City uh, Legal Aid Society. And he has written, taken, when I interviewed him, he, he was so powerful with uh, the story of how the book came to me. And as a black man himself, it was the story of um, having to have the talk with your children, mainly, mainly young men, but also young men too. And of course, now I do know better, but it, it wasn't long ago where I thought the talk was about the birds and the bees. But the talk really is about staying safe out there and being aware of your surroundings, doing the right thing and not antagonizing people in power and authority because they may not have the right thing. So it's a story about this brother and sister, Reed and Olive, and they have heard the talk, they've heard the thing, but they get put into a situation that it tests everything that they have learned. And it, it is so powerful. And little things like, um, it, it's, it, Read it. If you like the hate you give, this is a great companion read to that. The way that the children are treated, the way that society looks at them, they're mistaken for some other people who committed a crime. And so they are treated as though they had committed the crime. And every little move, there's there's a couple of things not giving it away, but there's like a, a they're riding the subway and the um and the police come in and he's a basketball or a soccer player, so he has a soccer. And he, he it drops to the ground. He goes to pick it up. And that just starts a whole chain reaction of things. And that's not getting in way. But oh. I recommend everybody read this book. Um, I learned a lot from it. Um, I know that there's other people who are going to recognize themselves in it. Um, but it's it's just powerful. And I, I, he's a wonderful, wonderful storyteller. Can you um, repeat the title one more sure, time? Sure. Please? It's called Come Home Safe. I'll post these two after or, or tomorrow. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it, it's, it, sometimes I, I really love young adult novels because they really get to the core of things. And, Me too. And, and they really, they really resonate with us even as grown ups. I read a lot of YA, I, I agree. And Angie Thomas is one of my favorites. Mm. And so when you said the hate you give, if it's along those lines, I know it's got to be incredible. Um, it's powerful. And um, OK, did you say two? Yes. OK, so I have a couple of these tonight. But so I I don't There's another thing that I do. You know, I've got I wear 17 hats, but for the American Library Association, I'm on a committee that awards or reviews and uses and awards the top 12 essential cookbooks for the year. 
So we have a list of 12 cookbooks that we have all, uh, as a committee, we fought over and da, 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 da. But there's a couple that were really like, well, there's one that was a standout and everybody just agreed this has to be on our list because it kind of defies, um, do you hear the train? The train. Anyway, so um, this is my first cookbook that just is so amazing. It's called Ghetto Gastro Black Power Kitchen. Wow. And if you haven't I... heard of this, get this book. Or I've get it from the library. It. Get it, I mean, get it from the library. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of that book. This book is... um. It's just so powerful. And it all started with a group of three men and they live in the Bronx and they decided that um, even before the book, they did, they did a, I think they did a um, profile of them on CBS Sunday morning where they're in the Bronx and they decided that people should be eating better. That people don't understand the background of um, the trailway of black food and black culture and how they intersect and everything. So they created this little pop-up where they created mostly plant foods was made from plants, but vegan. And um, so they were started feeding the community and starting conversations in the community. So oh. that kind of fast forward to now, this is full of 75 plant forward recipes, not all, but the, but almost all of them. So they call it the love song to the Bronx, history of black people and food. It's, and, but more than that, and what struck us so much is it's a big challenge to the culinary world and culture of culinary um, outlook because it does challenge all the norms and it challenges a lot of what we think of it when we think of culinary. And at the same time, when you're doing this, it's also a big manifesto of Black culture and Black history and Black relation to food over the years and stuff. So you learn a lot and it's just the kind of thing you want to hug because it's just, it's such a wonderful, wonderful book. And we we all were unanimously voting this one. in. So, Gaster. That's awesome. That is awesome. And and Ron, we've gotten some requests in the chat. I, I know you've done it in the past. Will you put your book recommendations I in will. a post on the page and we'll do the same? I will for sure. Okay, Lisa, what about you? What's your first pick? Okay, my first pick is a juicy little number called Friends with Issues by Meredith Berlin. <laughs> um, I think I wrote just, that. <laughs> <laughs> it came out January 24th, and it's written by, well, Meredith Berlin, but she used to be the editor-in-chief at Seventeen Magazine, and she did Soap Ooh. Opera Digest and things like that. So this is her debut women's fiction novel, and it follows three friends who made their mark in Manhattan, but they have to learn, they deal with struggling with the daily balancing act of friendship, career, and family. And there's there's Brooke, and she thought she married the man of her dreams, but she's questioning her marriage. And then there's Elizabeth who finds out she has, there's like a shattering diagnosis that she has to deal with and has some identity issues. And then there's Susan who is super excited when her media mogul husband catapults them into financial security, but she's uncertain about a, a lot of other things in her life. So there's like a lot of things going on in this book. It gives you sex in the city vibes. And it is a Pandora's box of new things and revelations that you never saw coming. It's shoe seat. So I love that cover. Friends with issues. And it's, it's my juicy. According juicy. to Lisa. How about juicy. friends with juicy issues? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's my first one. <laughs> Brenda, Brenda, Brenda. All right. Well, my first one is, and I'm reading it right now, so I, I haven't finished it, but I was really taken by it. It is called Good For You by Camille Pagan. And oh, I like um, that cover. It's due out, uh, let me put it on the side, it's due out on March 1st, but it was an Amazon first reads. And um, I'm, I'm reading it now, as I said, but it, it involves the main character is Allie. 
who has always wanted to be the editor in chief of, of All Good Magazine, and she had kind of a meteoric rise to gain that position. But Allie has some struggles from her past. She had an abusive childhood. Her brother was the one who was her buffer between her 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 dad and and her mother. Um, he has passed away in a sailing accident, and she is struggling with all of that. And then some surprising things begin to happen. Let me just say that um, that leave her in a kind of a tailspin. And of course, then there is um, her her brother's best friend who becomes her romantic interest, but I won't go any farther than that because I don't want to do any spoilers. I love, um, but I love the book so far, and some of her previous titles have just been so funny, like um, Life and Other Near-Death Experiences. Love that title, <laughs> and I'm fine, and neither are you, I love so that. I'm really looking forward to finishing this one up. Yay. Nice. Good one. Okay. Do we have any? Wanna, let's see if we have. Did you want to do sorry, another Lisa. one? Do you want to go ahead and do another one? Another round of picks? Yeah. Or do you want to start off sure. with one? Yeah. Yeah, go back around okay. the other way. Make it pretty. Okay. <laughs> Make it pretty. Okay. Well, well, I will. Um, I will <laughs> we got a I will, <laughs> I'll kick off the next round. Um, so we can go in reverse order. Um, this is what happened to Ruthie Ramirez. This would be good Ooh. also for Black History Month. It's by Claire, and I apologize, but Jimenez is what I think it is. Jimenez. Uh, Jimenez. And um, this is about a strongly matriarchal family in um, in New York who um, one of their one of the children disappears. The middle child disappears, and years later, they suspect that she has turned up on starring on a reality TV show. And it is about the um, family's efforts to reunite with her. So can't wait to see that one. And it is out. Oh, my goodness. I think it's. I don't have it in front of me, but. Oh, yes, March 7th. So it's really soon. Okay. All right, Lisa, you want to go next? Well, my next pick also comes out on March 7th. And um, it is a Zibby Books book <laughs> that's published under Zibby Books. Women are the fiercest creatures. Oh, I just got a copy of that. Yes, by Andrea Dunlop. I'm so excited for this book. I haven't started it yet. I love that cover. Isn't it great? Um, yes. Anyways, it's the first novel novel to be published under Zibby Books. And it's about Anna Sarnoff, who is still reeling from her divorce from a tech wonder kind, Jake Sarnoff. I love that name. Um, there's a lot going on in this book, set in wealthy enclaves of Seattle's tech elite. The lives of three women grow entangled as long-held secrets are forced to the surface, threatening to destroy their families. Ooh, Ooh. sounds juicy. That's, that's, that's sort of that should word. be your word of the night. <clears throat> Anyways. <clears throat> Women are the fiercest creatures. <laughs> so what, what happens before we go alive stays <laughs> private, right? <laughs> oh, help me. Anyways, it's a searing look at the complexities of family and the obstacles women navigate in every aspect of their existence. And this is it. Women are yeah. the fiercest yeah. creatures. So I'm looking check it to out. It. March 7th. Oh, oh man. I do love that. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Ron, how mm. about you? Well, there's so many to pick from. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get this one in, just make sure I get this in. So, um, we all know, remember, uh, um, I, I, I don't know what it was, when we lost our beloved Dottie Frank. 
Oh, and, yes. And one of the things that Adi had told me and is, is that she was talking about her daughter, Victoria, and that she's going to be a writer. She's a writer in her heart and that she always encouraged her. Well, guess what? Her daughter, Victoria Benton Frank, has got oh. a book coming out June of this year. And I was so nice. fortunate to get an early copy of it. And yes, you are. Remember in school when um, you'd like hide a book behind the textbooks and try to hide them, but you wanted to read them. So all the books that I have to read for ALA committees and podcasts and um, my work at the library, this is my dessert all the time. I'm about three quarters of the way done with this book. and. I am so impressed. I love the characters in this book. It's about um, Magnolia, also known as Maggie, who is a, she kind of leaves Sullivan's Island to go to New York and become a chef. She um, gets into the middle of it and, and Victoria writes so perfectly about that, that world of being in a restaurant and all the pressure. And, the, and I got to tell you too, all through the book, I've already learned two new things about cooking that I never knew before. And so I just like really. Yes. Yeah, so I know that she's she's trained as a chef. So like she's put those things in the book, and I've learned them. But the characters are so good. The characters are so fleshed out. You really fall in love with them. And it's and she has to come back home because her grandmother, who is her her shining star, is in a car accident. She's in a coma, and she has to go back to try, try to help her. But then of course we get all the family members and all the kooky and all the crazy and everybody's got their, their issues going on. And it's all about her coming back and the family in South Carolina owns a restaurant and it's all about who's running it. Who's, it all started with her great grandmother, Daisy. And it's the family comes together to try to figure all this out, the problems and the, it's, it's right so well. And, um, what I'm going to say, I haven't told her what I think about it yet. I want to wait till the end and kind of write her a whole thing. But I, like, your mother was right. Mother was right. This is so good. And I hope everybody puts this on their pre-order list. Um, hoping she's going to come on to Friends in Fiction. Maybe she'll visit me in Cleveland. I don't know. But um, just get your hands on this one. It's a perfect, perfect read for the, if you're a Southern literature fan, Southern books, go for Okay. Awesome. And Ron, yeah. Barbara was asking in the chat, could you say when it's coming out again? It's, all I have on here is June of 23. Right That'll after work. right after Demon Copperhead, Barbara. That's a private <laughs> chat. <laughs> okay. I have a um a comment from the chat that I like. First off, the chat is super excited about Victoria's book. Everyone is everybody talking needs to about be. it. So. Everybody needs to yeah, they're super excited. So that's good. But I want to read Susan's comment. She says, I met Dottie Frank twice at our local indie. She gave me an umbrella for being the first arrival at one of her events. I still have it and use it. And I'm looking forward to reading Victoria's book. Yeah. Good. Isn't that cool? I love that. Yeah. Oh, Dottie. Oh, Dottie. She, uh, she's a who. Um, one of the first times I was in Cleveland that she came to visit me, she's like, um, I don't think people at lot book at libraries buy books, so blah blah blah. I went, oh, you haven't been here in Cleveland. People here buy books. She goes, I'll bet you a dollar. I said, um, okay, let's do it. So uh, when it, her talk was amazing as usual, but then when she saw the people lined up before she even got to the first person, she said, "Get me my purse," and she signed me a dollar bill. And she said, "All right, you were right." <laughs> so I have that little story of Dottie that I love. Oh. Cheers to Dottie. Cheers to Dottie. Yeah. Cheers to Victoria too for for picking yes. up the reins. Carrying on her family tradition. All right. Oops. Oh what? That was my pup. Sorry about that. Well, oh. um, we have someone in the waiting room to come on to talk with us tonight. And I'm going to do her bio and you will, well, we'll have people guess who she is before she gets on. So this author and, is a full-time mom, huh? I'm and sorry. we we wanted to say that her book 
is a book that me and Brenda both are rec- we're going to recommend tonight. So it's perfect that she's coming on. That's right. It is perfect. So we will tell her that too when she gets on. But she's a full-time mom and writer. She formerly served as a marketing director for a wealth management company. She holds a BA in journalism and public relations from Marshall University and an MMC in mass communication from the University of South Carolina. Ron is wondering. I see the wheels spinning. She resides in Charlotte with her husband, John, and her children. (laughs) Her love of storytelling is a direct result of her parents' insistence that she read books or write stories instead of watching TV. Her interest in family history was fostered by her relative's habit of recounting tales of ancestors' lives. So welcome, Joy Calloway. Hello. <laughs> hello. Oh, hello, Joy. Hello, Joy. Hi. <laughs> welcome. I'm so glad, you know what? I'm so glad, Lisa and Brenda, that you actually have a copy of my book because I thought to myself today, I was like, I have no copies of my new book. So Glad you guys have it to hold up. <laughs> well, I don't have one either, so we're in the same boat. <laughs> Good. Ron, I'll have, to, I'll have to correct that. I'll have to get you one. Yes, yes, please, please. I love your other, oh my God. We, we mm. like to surprise Ron, so we were playing <laughs> game show style, you know, introduce the author without saying who she is. So this is a great surprise. They're not all good surprises. <laughs> this is a wonderful surprise. Well, thanks for having me, guys. I'm so excited. I was just... um coaching 35 cheerleaders from five years old to 12. So it's nice to have a little, you know, talking to adults now. Sounds, sounds fun. <laughs> That's completely we different. Might to, <laughs> we might be able to rustle up a cheer. You never know. <laughs> yeah, I, I was I, a cheerleader, Joy, so. <laughs> hey. But Joy, again, <laughs> welcome. And we were just saying before you came on that we, we were doing book recommendations tonight. And Lisa and I both picked um, for tonight to recommend all the pretty places. So why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Yes. Sure. So this book, um, like my debut novel, is based on my family history. And that makes it really, really special to me. All my books are special. It's like choosing your favorite children. I couldn't do that. But the books about my family are just so it, it's a gift to be able to spend some time with people I never knew. And so um, that's just amazing. Um, so my book is, sorry, my son's down here. John, you need to head upstairs. You can get, <laughs> I'll get you in a minute. I'll get you in a minute. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Ask your dad and I'll get you in a minute. <laughs> sorry. It's bedtime and you know, that just okay. stuff like this happens. Um, so back to my book. It is based on my family, uh, my great, great grandma and her family who lived in Rye, New York during the Gilded Age, and they owned the largest plant nursery in the Northeast during that time. And they sourced to notable landscape architects like Olmsted and Vox. And I've heard about them my entire life. And uh, my grandma is a great keeper of our family stories. And so she would always tell us about them. And for as long as I can remember, I wanted to write a book about them. Um, The main character is Sadie, and she wants to, um, sorry, I think my son's back down here. Um, (laughs) Sorry, no, he's not. (laughs) Crisis averted. Um, Sorry. So um, Sadie is the main character, and for as long as she can remember, she really wants to take over the family business, of the family nursery business. Um, She's a a kind of gifted, naturally horticulturist, and um, landscape architect. And so it just comes naturally to her. She's followed her dad around her whole life, read all his books in his library, all that stuff. And he, um, and so she thinks finally at the opening of the book that she's gonna get her chance because her one brother went off to pursue politics years before and the other brother has, is finally heading out. He's going to be the landscape architect for Flagler at his Florida um, hotels. So she finally thinks I'm the only one left. Surely dad's gonna see it now. And so she starts to kind of try to prove her worth to him. That's all all that she wants. And then what happens is (laughs) the love of her life, who she thought was long gone, shows up. And in the midst of all that, she's planting a garden at a really, um, at one of the summer estates in Rye. A lot of the industrialists on Fifth Avenue had summer homes in Westchester County. And so she's planting one of these fine gardens 
And the book takes place specifically during the panic of 1893. So um, this was a bad, the worst economic crisis before the Great Depression that the country had ever seen. Mm -hmm. So there was mass amounts of layoffs and stuff like that. And so she starts to see, because she's now involved in really every aspect, temporarily or hopefully permanently, she thinks, of her father's business, she starts to see while she's supervising the planting of these fine gardens, that there are people outside of the gates of these homes that are lingering outside of those gates. And there are people that are down their luck. There are people that have lost jobs, people that have lost their families, people who are starving, people who are starved for beauty, for natural beauty specifically. And she has a conversation with someone at, at the, one of the gates. And he tells her that the reason people are lingering there is to catch sight of a miracle because flowers and plants are miracles. They show that there's hope that you know, you can take a dead seed and it can spring forth new life and it's hopeful to him. And so they're, you know, they're gathering outside of these gates for that reason. And Sadie starts to realize that natural beauty is so restricted to really the wealthy during that time. And then she, it's, her perception starts to completely change. And she starts to think, not only if I take over my, my dad's business, Am I going to be fulfilling my own dreams? But maybe it's maybe this gift of mine is for something bigger. And so that's really the the gist of the story. And um, just about the transforming beauty of, you know, nature. And it's interesting. Um, I didn't really realize this till I got into my research, but even Central Park in New York, you know, everyone called it the People's Park when it was being built and things like that. But when you do research on it, you start to realize that it was not anywhere close to that. It was not anywhere close to the tenements. It wasn't anywhere close to the factories where people really could have used that breath of fresh air, that hope. It, they actually took out an entire um, African-American village to make room for this mm -hmm. park. Um, it was not the people's park. It was not accessible for everybody. And um, she realizes that too. And so it's just her quest to bring beauty to everybody. So that's what the story's about. I love that. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> I I'm know. Gonna say Ron. <laughs> so can I ask a question? Um, yeah. I didn't know you were coming on, but I love it. Um, so when since we talked on the podcast about um, the grand design, and now this book, you talked a little bit about what you were doing, but not a lot. And is there anything about your process that changed from writing the first book to this one? Did you learn something in doing it, or did you just continue because you already had it all down? Well, you know, I always, with, with all my books, I always take what I know to be historically accurate. You know, I get a really good picture of what yeah. history tells me, and then I fill in the gaps. And the same is true here. You know, thankfully, um, and, and really fortunately, I have my grandmother still. She's 92. And so nice. she tells me, um, you know, all kinds of stories, fills in details. But now, you know, thanks to the internet and everything, research is, you can find a really big wealth of information on archives and things like that. And so my process didn't really change much between the two books. The only thing that really changed is obviously I'm dealing with my own family in this. And so if the average person picks up the book and starts to read it, they don't know who these people are. And to them, they're just characters. But to me, they're real people and people that are realer to me than really Dorothy Draper is, which is oh, kind of no. interesting. <laughs> awesome. This one you can hold closer to your heart. Yeah, it's, it's cool to be able to spend time with your ancestors, you know, and people that you didn't, you're not going to know and just have heard stories about. And it helps to kind of tie those generations a little bit closer to help you understand kind of where you came from a little bit. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Makes sense of things. Yep. Well, we have some comments in the chat. Michelle and Susie both said they loved the grand design and everyone is excited for your new book. Yay. And, um, I wanted to thank you for this lap. I'm obsessed with this. Oh, good. I'm with the you book like, kit, oh, so she fun. sent a beautiful kit with the book and it had this lovely lavender roll on with it. That's amazing. I wear it a lot. Good. I love this. But, that was, you know, you had to, you have to have something really um, flowery and floral to go with it. I thought. <laughs> Well, we also, because we're doing book recommendations and we love to know what people are reading, what are you reading or do you have any book recommendations you'd like to share with us? Always. So <laughs> I just got done reading and I, I, I 
you know, went back and forth on whether or not I was going to recommend this one or one that was out because I know it's frustrating sometimes to have recommendations of books that aren't going to be out for a few months. But I wanted to get this on everybody's radar because it was such a good book that, I mean, I read it a lot while my daughter was swimming because she swims year round and it's pretty intense. So I get to just sit in the car and read. And um, I read this book. I did not want her to come out of swimming. I was like, how about you swim two more laps? Yeah, keep um, going. <laughs> but this is, by, <laughs> this is by a dear friend of mine, Erica Montgomery. We, <gasps> have you seen this? No, I haven't. But I, I met Erica at the Decatur Book Festival several years ago. I adore her. She's amazing. And we toured together forever ago. We did... Um, a tour with some of our buddies here in Charlotte. And at the time she was living here and I miss her dearly, but this was actually great because I felt like I was able to be with her while I was reading it. So this book is awesome. It is set um, in Martha's Vineyard and it is um, set at a family homestead. And there's three generational characters. There's Cora, Hetty and Mickey and Mickey's a chef. Um, Hetty is the daughter kind of stuck between the generations. Cora and Mickey have a really tight relationship and Cora has rediscovered a lost romance from long ago when she's older. Um, and she's planning on getting married to this man that no one has ever heard of except for her. So it comes as a surprise to everyone that suddenly she's getting remarried. And so it brings everybody back to this house. And of course, what happens Anytime you do this, you, you know, you're dropping this on somebody, what you're doing is you're bringing up a lot of secrets because there's a lot of emotions running wild. Always. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so this book is awesome. It's about, you know, complicated relationships between mothers and daughters. Kind of, I love the relationship between the grandmother and the granddaughter because I see it with my grand grandmas. You know how it's, it's interesting that in my daughter and my mom, that close knit relationship you have with somebody who's not your mom but close to your mom you know somebody who um, you can tell your secrets to who's still in your family and still a you know a safe bet but not your mom and you can just see that relationship really well in this book it's Erica writes amazing summer reads she has she has actually her newsletter is called 365 summer or something like that because she is all about the summer and summer reads so this is a perfect one to put on your list it comes out in June um we're trying to figure out some events to do together because we just love each other so much so we're trying to figure that out right now but in Cleveland. Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> hey I want to come to uh, we we would love it we gotta take it back on the road so we would love <laughs> to come visit and um yeah put this on your list for sure our place on the island you will not regret it it's gonna be a great summer read yes it is I can't wait you wrote it down and please give my love to Erica oh my god I will I will I know I just talked to her we we got on the phone and we talked for hours. So we got on the phone the other day and caught up. And um, yeah, it's just great to, it's great to have author buddies and it's great to have reader buddies. I don't know what we do without each other, you know. It's, oh, yeah. it's a great tight circle. It is. It's a wonderful well, community. But it's a big tight circle now. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, speaking of getting together with Erica, could you tell us a little bit, what, what events do you have coming up? Well, let's see. I have a long, um, I'll have a book tour coming up, you know, coming up in, uh, in May, putting that finishing touches on that right now. And I'm trying to think what else I'm doing um, coming up. I am, um, I'm helping Megan Church, who's a debut novelist, launch her, celebrate the launch of her book, The Last Carolina Girl. Um, it's a great book too, to put on your list. So I'll be there with her launching her book. And then I'll head out on the road in May. And hopefully I'll see some of you guys. I'm really excited. I'll be um, in Rye, New York on the launch week. I'll be in Charlotte. I don't think where else I'm going. Um, the Southern Pines, Greenville, um, West Virginia, Bookmarks. Making the rounds. Lots of places. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll well, we'll definitely share your tour schedule on the on the page once it's finalized, so everyone can come out and see you where you are. Well, and we want to remind you. everyone to pick up all the pretty places. It's on sale May 9th, so add that to your TBR and your calendar. You can pre-order it now. Yes. And I want to point out, this also is a great pick for our reading challenge for 
I don't remember which month it is, but one of the months <laughs> is <laughs> take a book by the cover. This it's is perfect. Beautiful for that. cover. Y'all, I just saw the back so. cover today and it is gorgeous. It's so pretty. Oh. They do such a good job with covers. Yeah. Well, congratulations on the book. Thank you yeah. so much. It Can't made my day to be with you guys. Thank yeah. you for having me. Yeah, <laughs> no, what a great thank surprise. You for... <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being our surprise guest. And we you adore you. So thank you so much for taking the time out. <laughs> of course. I love you guys. And I hope everyone, everyone out there in the chat, hope all you guys have a great night too. And thanks for hearing my talk about my next book. And I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> yay, yay. Oh, Take thanks care. so much, Joy. Have a great Thanks. rest of the evening. Bye, you guys too. Bye. Bye-bye. I love oh, her. Well, oh, she's adorable. Oh, my God. She was just in Atlanta at Foxtail um, a couple of weeks ago. And I really got to, that was the first time I met her in person. Mm. And we really got to talk and we all went out to dinner afterwards. And it was so nice to just have author reader time, you know? Right. Hi. Well, and when she came on the podcast, it was the first time I had met her and I hadn't read anything of hers before. And I was like, wow, I was so impressed. So impressed. Yeah, she's great. I wanted to mention too, that event she was talking about with Megan Church in Charlotte is February 28th, in case anybody is nearby and can, can check that out. That is a busy, busy, busy book day. And that's also Anissa, Anissa's birthday. Is it? Yeah, there's so many book events that day. <laughs> and she's I gonna be. She's gonna... These, I think so. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry, guys. I think that's right. Oh, if it is, <laughs> she can pretend that every book launch is her birthday party. I know there's all these events <laughs> that are going on that day. And I remember she was like, "Oh, I can't go to this one and that one," you know. But anyways, sorry. Sidebar. No worries. Time okay. for some book recommendations and announcements, I think. Yes. Yes. And so okay. who would like to? I don't care. Ron, okay. you go with you go with two more. Or did you already do two? No. He's done three. Okay. Right? Yeah. And I have I have bonus ones too if needed. Yeah. Okay. You do too. And then I'll go and then Brenda can go. So this is a book okay. that came out in January. It's already out. And it was um I it's somebody that's actually visiting me at the library. We're we're gonna do an in-conversation event <clears throat> next week. And I hadn't picked it up because I had so many other things going on. So towards the end. So I have now picked this book up and I <laughs> Ooh, you ever have that book where you pick it up and from the first page you fall in love with the character and it's a thriller or a mystery and you keep going and going and going and going and you put off your bedtime and everything to get it done? Well, this is Hyde by Tracy Ooh. Clark. And she's already oh. writes a lot of um, police books and mystery books. This is this first one in a new series and she has um, as her um, main character, Harriet Foster, who is a woman who has suffered great loss. She's, she, mm -hmm. I'm not giving anything away, but she's lost her longtime partner in the police force. She's lost her marriage. Her Everything in her life is upside down. She gets assigned to a new um, a new unit at the, on the police force in Chicago. And of course, then all of a sudden, her first out of the gate is a serial killer whose uh, trademark is lipstick marks around the wrists and the ankles of the victim. So Ooh. the first one is like, uh, but then the second one comes like, oh my God. Well, then, you know, it's like buckle up because you're on the roller coaster and you are going to just love this ride and it'll keep things going and everything. And it talks, it's, and it's, it's more than just a thriller too. It's, it's a ton about um, black women in the police force, women in general, in, in, in life and how they're treated. And it's just this great thing of a great storytelling and, and pulls it all together into this thing and by the end you go like woo we're done <laughs> but, but okay. one what? more time the title yes it's called hide it would have been perfect for the january uh -huh. challenge actually 
Yeah, it would This have. is the first in a bunch of books. This is only number one. Number two in the Harriet Foster series comes out in December. Get ready oh. and get ready. And so that watch. one is good for February challenge, though. Our February that's challenge. Right. Is yes, that's right. And then book and by a woman of color. Or I'm a person of color. So excited to meet her and talk to her about this. Unfortunately, it's only going to be live in Cleveland, not stream. Oh. 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 Can't wait. Well, you'll have to give us a summary. Oh, I will. Yeah. I'll have somebody like <laughs> take some pictures. That sounds like a good book. It's, I love those kind of buckle up and take off books. Buckle up. And so like recently on the podcast, we had um we we interviewed two um Chinese American authors, not together but separately about their books and like mm -hmm. for me, every time I just learn something new about another culture, about something that's not in my normal sphere, and I I treasure that so much in reading. And I I anybody who does it, I just what are you, you're missing out. You are missing out because it really builds empathy, builds knowledge, and acceptance, all kinds of things. I just love knowing about other people's experience. All right, ready for the next one? Yes. yes. All right, we're After going back. that one, yes. <laughs> we're going back to cook. We're going back to cookbooks, and this one I will tell you that not everybody on my committee at ALA was sold on this one until I strong armed them and told them that this is the best cookbook of the year, and this Ooh. is called Al oh, wow. Gichi Home Cooking, and its subtitle is Recipes from the Matriarch of a Disto Island. And it's a profile, oh. it's more than a cookbook, it's a profile of Emily Meggett. And she has been on that island for all of her 93 years. And she has brought all of this cooking uh, knowledge and things through the years. And apparently people bugged her and bugged her and bugged her for a long time to have work on a cookbook. So people beyond the, the, you know, the, the water around the island could learn all about her and her things. And she's actually been featured on Lots of things. So if you go on YouTube and look up her name, it's all there. But she's so down to earth. She's so um, so basic in telling people what's what, but so important at the same time. What I love about it is it brought me back to all the years that I got to sample low country cooking, low country this. So she's actually my, she was my inspiration for holiday cooking. This year. I made, um, I made Hop and John. And I made wow. uh, you know, from this, it's it's a great cookbook. It's accessible, it's amazing. And all the stories about the people on the island, a disto island in the low country, just it's kind of, I don't know. I just love, love, love it. So this is a book everybody needs to have in their collection. Oh, that sounds love awesome. It. And it's so great that, that she is helping to preserve the Gullah culture and yes. the rich, you know, yeah culinary heritage yeah so she talks a lot about amazing. about the diaspora and how how things came there from africa and how things were influenced because she's been around long enough but she really knows the backstory and the history and the and, and where where things came from definitely looking that one up love it all right lisa love do that. you did you have another pick to share yes i do and this one would work for the February prompt, um, a book written by a person of color. It's called Black American Refugee Escaping the Narcissism of the American Dream by Tiffany Drayton. Mm -hmm. And Brenda and I were lucky enough to meet Tiffany at the Zibby Awards. And she gave me this amazing book. She won oh, two Zibby Awards that night. I know. She won two Zibby Awards that night. And um, she is just a force. I I completely blown away by her. Um, but the book, uh, it started out as um, an expansion of her New York Times piece she wrote called Black American Refugee, and it examines like the depth of her personal experiences and the broader culture and historical ramifications of American racism and basically 
um, talks to issues and global white supremacy. But it's, there's so much. It's, um, if you if you like to watch interviews, I would uh, suggest that you look up when she was on The Daily Show with Trevor Noah. That's a good interview with her about this book. Um, it really explores the ramifications of racism across generations from what it was then and now. And she followed her mother at a young age to come here to pursue ep economic opportunities. and found that she had to deal with systemic racism and it's just an eye-opening book she is absolutely amazing um amazing. she is a, a just i can't think of a better word to describe her so you you want to read it it's it's not the easiest thing um but it's powerful that's how that's the word for it so this is my recommendation I love it. And I I, I wish that we didn't, I mean, yes, I love that we focus on these books during the month of February, but like year round, they're amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, any, I don't know. Absolutely. And I will say, we've mentioned this a couple of times, but I want to share for anyone who hasn't, um, who's new to our page and our, um, and our events, oh. One of the things we do is the official book club reading challenge yes. that Anissa heads up for us. And the, the the prompt we're talking about is for February. And the read is a book written by a person of color. So you can find this on, on the page. And it's a prompt for each month of the year. And so we wanted to provide some recommendations tonight that would work for that prompt. And also, since you pulled it up, it was August, I believe, is the one Twice. for a cover so i think both of both of these would fit for that prompt as well agreed excellent yes mm -hmm. absolutely agreed um and depending on what your name is it might work for another prompt <laughs> because one of them is a book by an author with the same initial as you <laughs> exactly so that's really broad well yes. um looks like we're down to my pit and I will be very brief because we are like we are um, a whisker away from our our supposed end time but I did <laughs> want to recommend uh, something that we've mentioned before but it's coming up let me see when is this one out um, it is out in I think it's March 28th April oh, okay Thank you. It is the mostly true story of Tanner and Louise by Colleen Oakley. And I just favorite. think that I like this story because it is one of those like multi cross generational stories. There's a young uh, sort of uh, lost woman, um, Tanner, who winds up being a caregiver for the elderly woman, Louise, who has many surprises um, and secrets in store. And so I'm really looking forward to this one. And this is probably a good time to make the announcement that our April book club read is going to be The Mostly True Story of Tanner and Louise by Colleen Oakley. So she'll be joining us on April 17th. Very nice. Yay. Lisa, We're so would excited. You like to I know. I'm excited for every time we announce the new ones. I'm just excited because it's just wonderful all the time. Oh, yes. And I wanted to share. Thank you. I want to share. I am not as quick on the draw as I should be. Here we go. <laughs> April 17th, 7 p.m. Eastern, right on our book club page. Yes. Yay! So, Lisa, would you like to announce our our picks for May and June? I surely would. And I will and pull I them do. up. Yes, I would like to point out. Do you did you know these? <laughs> what does Ron have any guesses? Do you know these? 
I don't know these. No, I'm teasing. I'm teasing, Ron, because it's more secrets that we've more been secrets. Holding. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so, well, the next date, I'm going to go in sequential order. So, April 17th is our book club with Colleen, as Brenda mentioned. And our next event for you to mark on your calendar is our next happy hour <gasps> with Ron. And that is on May 15th. And then our May book club pick, we are excited. We're going to have a special tea book club with Jennifer Robson and the coronation year. Oh, look at you. Yes. And there may so we're be super a tea excited party. For that. <laughs> there may be a tea party as well. Yes. There better be. Yeah, there will be. <laughs> And then our June pick is going to be a huge success that we are all super excited of. And it's the story of Flora Lee with Patty Callahan Henry on June 19th. So I, yay. Still, I still get like I still get a little misty thinking about that book. Like Can I you hold, it, hold it up again. Oh, yes. <laughs> I can't <laughs> wait to read the secret book of Flora Lee. Oh, it's. I can't wait either. It's going to take your heart out and go like this. Yeah, I have a copy, too, and I, I didn't bring it over to hold up. Well, we are just so Yay. excited about our upcoming events. I can't I'm wait. I'm sorry. My dog is, is barking in the backyard. He's very excited well, about the book. I'm excited too. So we'll do another Me quick too. rundown. April 17th, The Mostly True Story of Tanner and Louise by Colleen Oakley. May 15th is our happy hour with Ron Block. And that'll be at 730 25th. Eastern. Oh, it's May 25th. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. It's, uh, yeah. It's so May 25th is happy hour with Ron. Correct that with my people, will you? <laughs> you know what? I'm sorry. I gave you guys wrong dates. This is, this is an old, I apologize. My notes in front of me are wrong. So we're going to go over this again. April 17th is the book club with Colleen Oakley for the mostly true story of Tanner and Louise. Uh -huh. May 15th is our book club discussion with Jennifer Robson for the coronation year. And that's at 7 p.m. May 25th is our happy hour with Ron Block. And June 19th is our book club with Patty for the secret of, wait, I'm sorry. You say it, Brenda. <laughs> the secret book of Flora Lee. And you had them all right. You, you got them right, except the happy hour was just needed to be the 25th. So we're a good. We'll post cute. them to everybody. So. Thank you. So Ron, tell us, I know that we have to, we're, we're running a little bit behind, but please tell us about your upcoming podcast or any other events you'd like to, to share. Um, well, we talked a little bit about, um, on, when I was with the Fab Four and Meg, is it last? Must have been last week, I guess. A week ago, yesterday, we talked a lot about things that were coming up and stuff. But I'm so excited. Um, we, I just got the final, final thing for the, what's dropping tomorrow, and it's Lunar Love with Lauren Kung Jessen, and she blew us away. She talks about. Um, tradition versus technology. She learned the Chinese zodiac, so her Chinese American heritage could come. And it's a story about um, a woman who has tradition, and she's going to do a dating thing, and a, and a guy who has um, going to do a dating app based on it, with, um, technology, and they have a clash. Go on a talk show. They have a, a wager that they're going to use each other's method, and whoever falls in love first loses. And so it's so great. But she talked all about um, being, a, a, you know, a biracial writer. And she talked about she talked about her history with um, researching the Chinese Zodiac. 
and tune in because um, Meg and I get our year of the blank. I say, so it's going to be a great episode. Next week is last last um, thousand miles to Graceland with uh, another debut novelist, Kristen May Chase, and she. I have that this book right here. We talked about it already. It's awesome. It's about mothers and daughters. You know, you think it's going to be like fun rom com. No, it's it's a little deeper than that. Yes, it's fun. Like I, I called it a a chocolate cake that has this amazing frosting outside, but on the inside is this deep dark chocolate cake. And it's uh, what the book is about: mothers and daughters, and finding your way in the world, and accepting who you are. And it's such a great book, such a great podcast episode. And we have Rebecca Mackay coming up. Just book. Elizabeth, Ooh. who, you know, there's certain oh, wow. names where you, you hear their names and your heart just goes like, oh, and that's one of them. So she's coming up and lots more, lots more. Stay tuned. Awesome. That sounds great. Well, before we close out, we wanted to ask one more question um, that we probably will, we might start implementing this in our happy hours because it's, there's so much great television. So we want to know what are you currently watching and what you'd like to recommend? Uh, Ron, you want to kick us off or you want to think about it? Let me think about it a minute because I got several. Okay. okay. Brenda, you go first. Well, I'll go, I'll go ahead um, okay. because I um, I discovered this uh this new program called Fire Country, and it's just really, um, really interesting. It's about um, there's a there's a a fellow in prison, and he comes from a firefighting background, and he, they have a prison work program where the inmates learn how to fight fires, and so they get sent out um, to to fight these fires, and it's just really very interesting. Um, there's a connection to his hometown and, and a lot of drama there, but I, I've really been enjoying it. Um, the first one was like three episodes in a row. So it was a good start. Yeah. Well, I love that show also. Um, and Brenda, I was telling Brenda earlier that my boyfriend, my one of my celebrity boyfriends is on there. Actually, I have, I wanted to share so on the top is Jordan Calloway, who plays Jake on the show. And on the bottom is Kevin Alejandro, who is the fire captain on Fire Country. So I love it when all my favorites from other shows come together as one. So this is my men of Fire Country thing. Oh, thanks for Jordan sharing, Calloway Lisa, awesome. is my boyfriend in my head. He's my boyfriend in, in your my head. head. <laughs> yeah yeah no he's awesome he's a super nice guy very smart guy um my show that I recommend I'm just gonna be quick and I think it's I'm gonna narrow it down to two one is obvious because you guys know me and that's Mayfair Witches I'm a huge Anne Rice fan Interview with a Vampire was also great I love that those books as well but I always like the Mayfair Witches books. And I have to say that AMC is doing a great job with the show. So Mayfair Witches is good. And then there's a new show on Hallmark called The Way Home. And it comes on Sunday nights. It deals with a mother, daughter, gener like grandmother, mother and daughter relationships. And there's time travel in it. And it's really cool. It's like, what would you do if you had the opportunity to meet your mom when she was your age and be friends with her? And oh. it's really, oh, really, really cool. It's such a good show. And I'm not usually a Hallmark TV show person. I liked The Good Witch. Surprise, surprise. But it's not the typical ro romance, you know, Usually you can check off the list with Hallmark. You know, they have the same. It's totally different, but it's so, so good. So I recommend both of those shows. Oh, well. How about you, Ron? Well, we are, I think I'm an episode behind, but we, 
so not my genre, something I don't, I don't, this is like outside my comfort zone usually, but um, Last of Us on HBO, everybody was talking about it. I said, oh, all right, I'll dive in for one episode and see what happens. It's all based on a video game. And it's about yeah. this, <laughs> this um, fungal infection that takes over a, and creates a pandemic in the world. And this um, this father who um, has to deal with it with his family, uh, and he's played by, um, oh, what's his Pablo Pascal, I think. He was oh, yeah, just on yeah. Saturday Night Live last week. But he's been on like the Martin, you know, Mandalorian. I think he was also yeah. in. Yeah. Oh, he's you know, been big, in a lot. The big dragon thing. <laughs> Game of Thrones. Yeah, that I am yeah. on. Anyway, it's <laughs> so good. And it's like so survivalist. And he, there's a, um, in his travels, so it goes from one and then it goes forward 10 years. And there's another young woman he meets so who's kind of the antidote, if you would, of the disease that was killing everybody. She has part of it and he has to kind of protect her and get her to uh, where she needs to be to help the world, I guess. But um, some episodes, some TV shows, and I can think of like in Walking Dead, and if, if uh -huh. you haven't watched it, don't watch, don't listen. But there was one episode on that series where a character that I love so much was dealing with a little girl who got really uh -huh. sick and she had to deal with her and everything. And that stays with you forever. Well, episode yeah. three of this one, is that episode and oh. it, it pulled me right in and it's more about humanity and beauty and love in the in the midst of all of this and anyway so i'm totally hooked love also that. throw a plug in for dear ed i started watching dear edward based on the book uh by ann napolitano and it's so mm -hmm. good Connie britain is in it and on my list Schilling, who was in Orange is the New Black. It's oh, that's so another amazing. great show. Yeah. Where do yeah, I that's read? on my list. <laughs> I know. I know. It's, we're just making it worse. We keep piling them on. I know. Now we're giving you stuff to watch and stuff to read. I know. So we're really, we're taking everyone, over your life. Everyone quit your job and read and watch. <laughs> oh. And what you're listening to will be nice. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, no. Oh, oh. Well, I'm listening to Grady Hendrix right now. I'm oh. almost done. I'm oh, terrified. Well, I'm terrified. We're going to go there. Let's do it. I'm listening to Unprotected by um, Billy Porter's uh, memoir. Oh, I listened. So good. And he reads it. So, so oh. Good. So good. Yeah. Yeah, I, well, I'm listening to How to Sell a Haunted House, which I loved and talked about last week, but it gets creepier and creepier, but also it's so full of heart and the brother-sister relationship that everybody can relate to, and it's scary. Scary dolls. All right, that's I what I'm love saying. Grady Hendrix. I'm such a fan. It's on my list. Oh, <laughs> um, Dear Edward is on Apple TV. Yes. I meant to say that. Well, a lot of people in the chat are, yes, they're talking about all of the books and the shows. Thank you for hanging in with us later. Um, and we look forward to seeing you on February 20th, where we'll be discussing the vibrant years with Sonali Dev. Yay, that'll be awesome. Yeah, yeah I'm excited. And don't forget. I'm really excited too, and don't forget to put, to um to to mark your calendars for March 20th when we talk with Sadika Johnson about the House of Eve. The Reese, so, pick, yeah. you know, the newest Reese Witherspoon pick, you know. Yep, she was just her book just came out Tuesday. She's the Reese I Witherspoon, know. so she goes from Reese Witherspoon to us. <laughs> what can we? That's the perfect transition. It's a yeah, I don't know how to. I don't know how she's going to feel about that. But anyway, oh, she gosh, will be so amazed she... by it. She's a. Yeah. She's so wonderful. <laughs> she's such a great. Yeah, person. we really can't wait for February and March. So such exciting looks coming up. I know we ran long tonight. Thank you guys for hanging in there with us. But we are just 
excited to share recommendations with you and just have another time to to have fun with each other and enjoy it. So everyone have a great evening and we will see you on February 20th. Yay. Thanks for thanks for having me. Take care. Thanks, and thank Ron. you, Ron. We love you. Love As you always. too.